How many of you, how many of you are familiar with the TV series Mad Men? And how many of you have actually seen the series? Not many. But you are familiar with it? Yes? Okay. Today I, I have the privilege of introducing to you two real-time madmen. Two people that I've known for over 25 years. And I can actually, actually call them mad. Uh, they are uh, Shahzad Nawaz, the man that you've been, uh, you must have seen on the stage yesterday, and the person who's been behind what you have seen here uh, since yesterday and even before. And Faraz Maksud Hamidi, uh, the person who is behind many successful campaigns in the country, including the uh, camp uh, advertising campaigns for our title sponsor, EBM. Uh, and, and, interestingly, these two people, these two persons, are also behind two markhors. Do you know what markhor is? Okay, markhor is a special kind of a, um, uh, of a uh, goat that you find in the northern Pakistan. Um, and it means a snake killer, uh, because it kills uh, snakes with its uh, horns. So these two people are behind two markhors. When I say markhors, I mean the markhor logos. Shahzad Nawaz has designed the uh, Markhor logo for an organization called ISI. And Faraz Maksud Hamidi designed the ill-fated Markhor logo for the National Airlines, uh, Pakistan International Airlines, PIA, which was taken off on the orders of Supreme Court. But yes, two people behind two Markhors. And you know, I've worked with both of them. I've worked with them for over 25 years and I've known them. I've had the privilege of knowing both of them for over 25 years. Uh, over the years, I've seen them blossom into two of the most creative minds in Pakistan. Uh, Shazad, I, uh, uh, Faraz, I uh, worked with, uh, Faraz and I worked together at Sachi's uh, over 26, 27 years ago. And uh, Shahzad, I interviewed for his first job, which he had the audacity of turning down. Uh, they, and they're meeting here today for the first time. Well, not exactly for the first time, let me just say, almost for the first time. Uh, they've, they've known of each other, because of, obviously they're two great uh, creative minds in the country. They know each other very well, uh, by, by reputation, by name. But they had actually never met face to face, except for about a 15 minute um, slot sometime last year at the APNS's advertising round table. But that was hardly a 15 minute or 20 minute uh, meeting. So they have not never met each other. They met here for the first time and are meeting here today uh, professionally for the first time in a discussion and a conference environment. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm privileged and honored to present two of the greatest creative minds in Pakistan, Shahzad Nawaz and Faraz Maksud Hamidi. Finally, good meeting you, Faraz. Hello. Nice to meet you. And regarding uh, his comment on the two Markhors, it doesn't take rocket science to know actually which Markhor went down. <laughs> so so uh, speaking of uh, Markhors, that's sort of, um, uh, it's an interesting story for both of us because yours was for a private organization. No, a Mine state, <laughs> state institution. <laughs> Mine was for a very public organization. So um, what, how, come, how come you came up with um, my inspiration before I did? <laughs> um, well, uh, uh, what I saw when I looked at CIA, Mossad, MI6, I realized that that too essentially in itself was a brand. Mm -hmm. 
And for some reason, inter-services intelligence is feared more than loved. <laughs> However, I felt that it must have a face. Why can't we simply have an identity? Yeah. For the idea of Markhor came for one essential reason that it is the national animal of Pakistan. Just like you would say when I made my last feature film, it was called Chambeli and Chambeli is the national flower of Pakistan. Therefore, I breathe Pakistan in a different sentiment and way and how I view it altogether. I worked uh, with the ISPR for four and a half years and was responsible for how the new image was a requirement in the new operation information or the buzzword today, which is the fifth generation warfare. Eating raw in inverted commas is an instinct. And that was where the Markhor came from. Clever. What about yours? Clever. So sometimes in a organization, we need to get the brand story sort of out into the world. And in a case like uh, our national airline, of course, you want the sort of the hygiene aspects of an airline to be absolutely perfect before you actually go out and claim sort of psychological territory. Uh, but in our, in our case, we were challenged. We didn't, know, we didn't know whether our brand story should be as perfect with a, with a product that per perhaps wasn't. So we, I think as a team, we sort of took a gamble and we said, perhaps, perhaps if we make a brand story and use the Markhor as a symbol of Pakistani resilience, because it is on the cliff tops and it is endangered and, and, and people are sort of hunting it down and everybody has bad things to say about it. So with using that as a symbol, perhaps we might be in a position to create something beautiful. And the entire visual vocabulary of the brand was sort of, you know, done, you know, and, and was parked. Uh, and then we, and we launched it and the, and the Markhor actually flew on, on our national airline. My, my question to you would be, as, as a fellow creator, I've, I've seen and heard of the Pegasus. Yes. But imagining a Markhor with wings, yeah. what was the so process? So that's also interesting because uh, it's a goat. And when I was designing that, we sort of knew that perhaps a goat might be too close to uh, uh, Qatar. So we did put in a bit of a unicorn. We did put in a bit of a Pegasus. We did put in a bit of the Barak. In the process. In, in, the, cues, in the cues of the design of that. Of that so so in the process, yeah. did the idea occur that the national bird of Pakistan is Chikor? Of course, we went through hundreds. Did you, did oh, you yeah, try hundreds. that? Oh, yeah, did it course. not work? No, no, we did a hundreds, hundreds of reviews. And, and then this was finally sort of selected. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I've been seeing your, one of your campaigns, mm -hmm. which is Zong. OK, for Zong. And if you actually look at the logotype, then the O is, is, is a gong with a mallet striking the negative space. So we embedded that. And we yes. also embedded a new dream, which is the retail brand for China Mobile. The in, longest, in China. longest running dream in the world, 200 years. Run, absolutely. So, the, so the topic was this about madness. Do you think it's a stereotype and a cliche? Or is it really this eccentricity and madness, which is an important ingredient to the entire process of creativity? You know, I can, with a large degree of sort of confidence, say that perhaps certitude is for stupid people. And any kind of progress, I think, is based on some degree of heresy, some degree of madness. And, uh, you know, so it's all these, any kind of provocations has to come from a place of uh, either you know, great tyranny or great despair or great isolation. So I think that is, that's the nature of the creative, creative force. And I think anybody who's involved with what I call white paper blues, uh, they, they face it every day. And I don't think it should be taken lightly. Tell me about your Peacock logo. Right, what inspired you? Why did you think of okay, this particular uh, language? Uh, PAA came with a very fixed brief. It was, we must have a peacock. Oh, really? Okay. It must have truck art color. And I think the delegates by now actually know why it's there, because I started looking at the Indo-Turkic Persian influence of Urdu and Persian, Persian script actually, uh, calligraphic arts. And I, again, I am a big, uh, because I grew up seeing the great personalities of my country actually sign their names in, in, in Urdu. Mm. And I, I somehow saw that we were moving away from the tradition of the national language. So I make a very conscious effort, be it Foggy Foods, be it Geo, be it Neo, be it uh, Harp News, or I try and live up to the spirit as 
stated in the constitution mm. which was meant for the government which is making use of urdu language which originally it was supposed to be done in 15 years after the constitution was improved <laughs> so at the cost of being perceived outdated orthodox old fashioned i have this subliminal uh, um, yeah. response sense of responsibility towards my my country mm. i am what i am mm. for this great land mm. and i accept just like a person would accept a lover with all the faults and everything that needs to be improved in between so i wanted to induct urdu in it and hence this became the first logo in the tradition of ad, ad asia to be rendered in the national language of the host country yeah thank you and if you see the the tail it has 15 uh, parts to it because they represent the 15 members of the alpha nice. and uh, so there was no limitation it could have been 20 but the odd one out was that usa was part of the asian federation and i love this hegemonic uh sense of insinuation <laughs> whether it these are trade bodies and i see you smiling jabe jabaz sir <laughs> and all for the right reasons or the wrong ones <laughs> uh so but yes this is from where it came and the good thing about while i was doing the brand image engineering communication for ad asia pakistan advertising association their organizing committee the past chairman ali who's on his phone and mr hadri was still listening to me they gave me the liberty then this entire lot of professionals being advertising professionals it's hard because hamara dilemma ye allow me to say a few words in urdu meri angrezi jo hai maine khud seekhi hai kyunki javed jabbar jab kent public mein the uska uska standard aur tha jab main aaya wo aur ho chuka tha isliye ye senator aur minister bhi ban gaye aur amid adar ghumte reh gaye it's difficult for the advertising practitioners to actually let someone else have the freedom to create and thereby i was very very lucky mm. otherwise this would not have happened and this is i believe where the word madness wala part comes in mm. client hote hain wo kehte hain pagal hai aapke to baal lambe the mere to bade hone se pehle hi girna shuru ho gaye <laughs> but just to just to uh, comment on that i've sort of noticed the real passion with urdu and sort of the ethni uh, ethnicity of our local design cues coming out from from your work and oddly enough um i've sort of done the done the exact opposite because i think one of the first things that i sort of sensed in our visual culture was the fact that it's not sort of mannered in the way that at least i was exposed to so a lot of what i brought was this sort of a cosmopolitan Uh, vocabulary to a lot of our I, local brands but i'm now dubbing putting in the dust nice. when, when i when i did it, the yeah. pakistan tehreek e insaf seal mm. the round dell that you see mm. much before pmln adopted it mm. the idea was to try and modernize knowing that we have a huge setback mm. in terms of typography mm. we have not evolved our fonts the way the persians and the arabs have absolutely done. and especially what you see in dubai right. right and we do not see that sense of contribution from mm. pakistani typographers mm. which led me to digitize few fonts oh, and i love playing and the rest of the calligraphy i i do excellent. it myself uh and the and i'm hoping for a better visual ecology for pakistan right. but that cannot happen without the intervention of policy framework mm. in the uae it is mandatory for you to have the national language so is in, in bangladesh mm. i think uh, javed jabbar sahab had an odd one out agar ye aur ruke rehte to shayad mere mulk ka jhanda bhi azad ho jata <laughs> because i as a citizen of pakistan am not allowed to flutter my flag other than august 14th and march 23rd mm. and i talk to these lawmakers and parliamentarians each time i meet them and i get to meet them and the more i meet them i get dissolution but no disrespect meant all it takes is private members bill a motion to be passed mere jhande ko azad kar do you want to use the flag on your cars your vehicles according to the blue book and the protocol set by the ministry of um, interior please use the state emblem pakistani flag belongs to the pakistanis and it must be free 
and even we haven't even quite done any kind of merchandising. There's no sort of you know merchandising on patriotism. I mean, if you go to any country, then everything from caps and jackets to I mean, that entire visual vocabulary is missing from our culture. And I think we could really use that and amplify it. So uh, should we should we take questions? Please. Questions? Anybody? Anybody got? Yeah, you got someone up there. Yeah, ask us anything. Faculty members, uh, I was going fine without it even anyhow. Uh, so we are here from Abbottabad. Uh, we are uh, representing uh, a business school there. So it, firstly, let me just congratulate all the organizers that this has been really a wonderful event. It's, it's such uh, an exciting thing for us to be a part of this and looking forward to the uh, c coming sessions and tomorrow, obviously. Now my question may seem very naive as compared to the, all the advertising people sitting over here, but as a creative director or somebody who is really in charge, how do you take the final step when it comes to taking a decision that this is the thing that we are going to go forward with? Uh, you told us about the ad issue that you had a clear direction, it has to be a peacock and you need to follow that. But when it comes to Zong following a new dream or any other slogan or any other thing that you would want to project a whole brand in front of the world, what is the final step that you, that you take? How do you convince yourself that this is the thing that is going to matter? Thank you. It's a, it's, a, it's a good question, yeah. It's a good question. I actually, you know, you obviously are, um, you're given a brief, and we assume that that brief is coming from a whole set of, uh, you know, insights and research and, you know, data mining. And then you sort of have to lock yourself into a room and wait for the muses to come through, okay? And, and, and as, as perhaps regressive as this may sound in the digital age, that fundamentally is what needs to get done. And then you sort of begin the exploration process. You know, you, you start sort of uh, going towards what might work, might not work. And it's obviously not so black and white as you're making it sound right now. We have several sort of iterations uh, and you have meaningful discussions with, with the client side. And then at the end of the day, it's really what the client, what resonates best with the client. And somehow we feel that when you hit upon the right idea, it, it resonates with everyone. It just seems to feel right. Uh, and then we, then we take the plunge. And sometimes, well, most of the time, it works out if your gut is sort of strong enough. Uh, and rarely would it, would it bomb. But if it does, then there are obviously other ways that you could sort of uh, you know, take that back. But, but to sum up, what I'm sort of saying is that uh, at least with respect to all the stuff that we've heard about things digital, um, I sort of recommend to people to take their, um, you know, small decisions on, on big data and make their big decision through, through your gut. I could just quickly add how I approach this. For me, the true artist is the creator of the universe because I know that man has no control over an idea. An idea does not belong to man. Idea exists as a metaphysical form in the universe. Only few of us practice to tap into that energy form and bring it back to life in any medium, be it two-dimensional, three-dimensional, print, you name it. The biggest farce is to being labeled creative. It is an illusion. And I believe a brief can only be constructed scientifically into four steps. Analytical, conceptual, interpersonal, and technical. So conceptual side is what Faraz spoke about. Analytical is that you must have the belief and ability to actually express your idea to your client and make sense. With me, it has always made sense. It made sense to them as well. And then interpersonal ke baad, obviously up eventually technical bhi chale jate. Analytical is where Faraz also spoke about data, right? But really, if I were to sum up my experience, hoi mohabbat rabd naal jhum bhulaya ghum pagal pagal loki akhan bhulaya aho aho ak. You have to let go to the to the universe, and it comes back. I'm glad you translated that. Uh, to English. Um, anyone else? Yeah? Hi. Hi, guys. Uh, I have a quick question for Shahzad. Uh, you told us that you left the agency life like 20 years ago and become an indie artist. 
to become an indie artist. So what really moved you to do that? And uh, what were the challenges you faced during this time? My biggest challenge in the world I am the impediment, I am the catalyst. Because insan ne, Allah Ta'ala has made you a part of the world. And what really inspired me is a quote from Rumi. Why do you crawl like an insect when God has given you the wings to fly? I have faced no challenges other than my own. Everything else is actually when we get afraid. And I believe that there are two things. The fear of the unknown and the fear of the consequences. I'm free of both, which allows me the freedom to be, become, and hence express. I cannot say I've had challenges. These small irritants, hindrances, only make me take a loftier flight and fly higher. They do not deter me. So I really don't know what it is in the classical sense. I have had no problems in terms of clients because good begets good. Did I not read that when I was young? And how could the, the wisdom of our elders and our, our culture and our civilization not make sense to us? So it is karma, it is vibe, it is metaphysical, it's energy. How can bad happen to me when I seek good? So it has always been goodness all around, and I am the epitome of that. I'm a proof that one does not need to market his or her abilities and skills. And trust me, work, projects, walk up to you. As a business practice, I do not solicit business. I do not compete in pitches, because the JD, the job description of God is to provide. I don't interfere with my boss. He's my best friend. Just to add to that, I, I think we, there's, um, you know, we have we have procurement today, and I think at least in the creative in the in the creative uh, community, that's sort of anathema to a lot of what we what we do, and I can't sort of uh, emphasize enough how important it is to understand that when you are, or when at least when you're trying to sort of get a creative person onto the business side or the client side, then you're really paying them for their vision, as opposed to trying to twist them to, you know, to get to the you know, lowest common denominator. That understanding, sadly, doesn't sort of resonate in, in, in the procurement side, because obviously as, a, as, a, as an agency structure, we need to counter that a lot. But it's, it's important to sort of just keep that in, you know, in mind. I, I yeah. think also the time has come for Pakistan Advertising Association to also respectfully follow its own bylaws and the bylaw says that no advertising agent will make a speculative presentation without first agreeing to a development charge yeah. so these protocols need to and I understand what, why what we're i today. know they're doing <laughs> is 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 trying to bait a client yeah. and going all the way thus disrespecting their own structure yeah. right and, and as a protest morale. when yeah. i did when i was in the formal advertising business as a protest I did not join Pakistan Advertising Association, and this might not gel with my, my host and friends well, but I thought it was a hegemon. Only the owners of the advertising agencies were supposed to be members, whereas in reality, it would, should have been the practitioners of the trade who should be part of the permanent voting membership in PAA. Which we still don't have. Which we still don't have. We don't have a practitioner's Forum, which is uh, unfortunate. So I had my visual cue, the backstage <laughs> uh, we coordinator. Have to, we have to wrap up. We are out of time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Thank guys. You.